NASCAR has always been a sport full of intense drama and controversy, both on and off the track. This week has been no different. With major legal battles, accusations of favoritism, and criticism of the playoff format, the NASCAR world is buzzing. These are not just minor issues. Each of them has the potential to significantly impact the future of the sport. The 23XI racing lawsuit, Christopher Bell's fiery comments, and Denny Hamlin's outspoken criticism of the playoff system all come together to paint a picture of a sport that's evolving rapidly, but not without its growing pains. The issue is a huge deal because it touches on a key element of how modern NASCAR works, the charter system. The charter system was introduced in 2016 as a way to give teams more financial security. It guarantees a team entry into every race, which is a big deal for sponsors who want to make sure their brand is always visible. Without a charter, teams must qualify for each race on their own, which could mean missing a race and losing the exposure that comes with it. 23XI Racing, co-owned by NBA legend Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin, is fighting to keep its charter as the team believes losing it could be catastrophic. The team's legal argument is that if they don't have a charter for next season, they could lose drivers and sponsors, which would deal a major blow to their business. This isn't just speculation. During the courtroom proceedings, it was revealed that their driver Tyler Reddick had a clause in his contract that allows him to leave if the team doesn't have a charter. This clause shows how important charters are in the modern NASCAR business model. Sponsors, too, have built similar clauses into their agreements with teams, making the stakes incredibly high. It's unlikely that Tyler Reddick would actually leave 23XI Racing, at least in the short term. Reddick is in a great position with the team, and they've shown that they can compete at the highest level. In fact, Reddick is contending for a championship this season, which only adds to his value within the organization. But the fact that his contract includes an out clause tied to the charter situation shows how fragile these relationships can be. Sponsors and drivers want stability, and without the guarantee of being in every race, that stability goes out the window. Michael Jordan's involvement in NASCAR has been a major talking point ever since he entered the sport as a team owner. His star power and business acumen have brought more attention to the sport, but he's also a relatively new player in a space dominated by legacy teams. Losing a charter would be a major setback for 23XI Racing and could discourage other investors from entering the sport. This legal battle is about much more than just one team. It could set a precedent for how NASCAR handles these issues going forward. NASCAR, on the other hand, is pushing back hard against 23XI Racing's request for a preliminary injunction, which would allow them to continue racing next season with a charter while the legal case is decided. The courtroom drama is still playing out, with reports suggesting that a decision could come soon. The outcome will likely have far-reaching implications for how teams negotiate contracts with drivers and sponsors in the future. While the legal battle rages on, another controversy has been brewing, this time involving Christopher Bell and his comments on Chevrolet's supposed favoritism during the race at Martinsville. Bell was eliminated from championship contention after the race, and his frustration was clear when he took to social media to post a photo with a caption, just a couple of guys missing a bow tie, huh? For those unfamiliar, Chevrolet's logo is often referred to as the bow tie, so Bell was clearly taking a shot at the brand. The crux of Bell's frustration seems to stem from the fact that Chevrolet drivers Austin Dillon and Ross Chastain were reportedly instructed not to pass their teammate, William Byron, in the closing laps of the Martinsville race. This move allowed Byron to secure a spot in the championship four, while Bell was left on the outside looking in. To Bell and many others, this seemed like race manipulation, with Chevrolet favoring Byron over other drivers. Bell's cryptic post sparked a flurry of responses from fans and other drivers, with many interpreting it as an accusation of bias. What makes this accusation particularly interesting is that it's not without precedent. Back in 2020, Joe Gibbs Racing, the team that Bell now drives for, was involved in a similar controversy. In that case, Eric Jones was instructed not to pass his teammate Denny Hamlin in order to help Hamlin secure his playoff position. NASCAR reviewed the incident but chose not to issue any penalties, leading many to believe that race manipulation, while frowned upon, isn't always punished. 
Given this history, some fans found Bell's comments hypocritical since his own team had benefited from similar tactics in the past. But Bell's frustration is understandable. In a sport where every race, every lap, and every decision can mean the difference between winning a championship or going home empty-handed, the perception of unfairness can be hard to swallow. NASCAR, for its part, has tried to crack down on team orders that could be seen as manipulating race outcomes. But enforcement has been inconsistent at best. Bell's comments have reignited the debate over whether NASCAR is truly impartial when it comes to how they handle these situations. Some fans and commentators argue that NASCAR has shown favoritism towards Chevrolet and Hendrick Motorsports, one of the most successful teams in the sport. Hendrick's close relationship with Chevrolet has led to speculation that the manufacturer sometimes gets preferential treatment. But there are examples that suggest NASCAR has not always gone easy on Hendrick. For example, in 2023, NASCAR handed Hendrick a massive 400-point penalty for modifying car parts, a punishment that many saw as a clear message that no team is above the rules. Still, the perception of bias remains, and Bell's comments have only added fuel to that fire. NASCAR's handling of these situations will likely continue to be a topic of debate, especially as the sport moves into the final race of the season. While Bell's comments have sparked controversy, another ongoing debate in the NASCAR world is about the playoff format itself. Denny Hamlin, who has never been shy about sharing his opinions, has been one of the loudest critics of the current playoff system. On his podcast, Hamlin voiced his frustration with the format, arguing that it doesn't reward drivers for consistency over the course of the season. It just, you know, emphasizes the, the win and you're in format, right? Um, you know, Joey obviously got in on fuel mileage and there's no other way around it, right? They, they weren't fast enough to win, so they found another way to win, which is through the fuel mileage. But that, that, that takes a spot from some of your big winners and the most dominating drivers of the year are out because of one race. And so this is the, the downside to the format. You know where I've stayed on this for, for quite some time. I, I believe that there is very, 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 very few people out there that believe that this format uh, rewards the most deserving champion in our series. I think that's why you've seen a shift in driver's mentality to win races. Hamlin also shared a conversation he had with Mike Ford, a NASCAR communications executive, in which Ford allegedly dismissed online criticism of the playoff format by saying it was driven by bots, not real fans. I talked to Mike Ford a little bit last night, NASCAR comms. I said, man, this format is getting hammered on the net. And he's like, it's, it's bots, it's not real people. And so I says, okay, I mean, you can, you can turn a blind eye if you want, and you can be in denial, but numbers don't lie. Numbers never lie. And, and the fact is, is that you've got some, you got some in propriety. You just got not in proprieties. You got just some randomness to this thing. Ford later clarified his comments, saying that he was only referring to the presence of bots on social media in general, not the specific criticism of the playoff format. In the old point system, a driver who performed well throughout the season was more likely to win the championship, even if they didn't win a lot of individual races. In the current system, a driver can have a great season, only to be eliminated in the playoffs because of one or two bad finishes. Hamlin's argument is that this system doesn't allow true superstars to emerge because it rewards short-term success over long-term dominance. That is true. It is watering down the superstars of our sport. No question about it. Absolutely. That is the gist of the... I guarantee you if NASCAR could put a playbook together and say, who do we want? What are the best four for ratings and all that? Is this the four? No. That's, it's the problem with parity. It's the problem with creating a format that allows when in you're in. It just ignores all the poor performance that you had before that. As NASCAR heads into the final race of the season at Phoenix, the championship four is set with drivers like Ryan Blaney, William Byron, and Tyler Reddick all vying for the title. The outcome of the race will be determined by a combination of skill, strategy, and as always, a little bit of luck. In the end, just make sure to comment down your thoughts on this and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more upcoming content.